What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to update your records for your tree view with Kenter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at updating records. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I thought we might be done with the tree view, but a couple of you are like, hey, we never talked about updating records. And you're right, we never talked about updating records. We talked about adding them and deleting them, deleting several of them or just one of them but we never actually talked about updating them. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So if we click on here, click update record, you can see here in our little boxes, the record I selected, it's put there. We can change this to Bobby, click save update, boom, up here, it changes to Bobby and this then disappears. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So head back to our code. I'm working in tree.py. If you haven't seen the last few videos, check the link in the comment section below. I'm using the sublime text editor and the git bash terminal as always. So the first thing we need to do is come down here to the bottom where our buttons are and add a couple of buttons. So let's see, here's our buttons and let's call this update underscore button. And that's going to be a button. And we want to put this in root and we want the text to equal uh, let's say select record and let's give this a command of select underscore record and go ahead and copy this and maybe we should call this select button instead of update button so select button dot pack and let's give this a pad y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit and i'm going to change this one to 10. So here we can go uh, select record and let's go define select underscore record and let's just pass for now. Now let's also create a button called update button and that's going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal uh, save record and let's give this a command of update underscore record and copy this and then let's update underscore button dot pack and let's give this a pad y of like 20 to push it down the screen just a little bit and let's come up here and let's go save updated record something like that define update record and we can just pass this guy okay so we need to select a record. And the first thing we want to do is delete those three boxes. We have those three entry boxes, just in case we, if we've already selected a record and there's something in there, or if we type something in there earlier when we wanted to add a new record, if there's anything in there, we need to delete whatever's in there. So those were name underscore box, and we can go dot delete this. And we want to delete from zero to n. These are entry boxes. So remember, this is how we delete them. So I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple of times. This other one was called ID box. And the third one was called topping box. Topping, maybe? Yeah, topping box. So, okay, as soon as we click this thing, we immediately delete the old, and let's comment this, I suppose, delete or say clear entry boxes. Okay, so we want to select a record. Whatever is actually clicked on, we want to grab that. And there's several different ways we can do that, but we can do that by calling either selection or focus. So on our my tree. So remember our tree is called my tree. So we could go my tree, like for instance, dot focus. And this will tell us the thing that is selected. So let's go selected equals my tree dot focus. And Let's go ahead and create a label down here at the bottom and output exactly what that is just to see what this thing is doing. So let's come down here and let's just create a temporary label. Let's just call it temp underscore label. And this is going to be a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to be nothing now. And let's go temp underscore label dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. So now we can take this temp label up here. Let's give some space here. And let's just go temp label dot config and set the text equal to selected just to see what is going on here when we select something. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. 
So let's go Python tree dot pi. And we can pull this over and let's grab Aaron here and click select record. And you can see down here, three pops up. So remember, these are list items, basically. So lists in Python always start at zero. So John is zero, Mary is one, Tim is two, Aaron is three. So now that we know the number that is selected, we can do stuff. So what kind of stuff can we do? Well, if we come back here and look at, let's see, when we created the stuff, like right here, right? Remember we put in text equals nothing. We put in these values. These values, oh, come back, come back. These values are the three things, record zero, record one, and record two. And those are name, ID, and topping. So the values are the things we want to query. Sometimes if you're using text, you, could ver you can query text, but we set this up as values, so we're going to query those values. And to do that, we can just come down here and let's see, let's head back to our function, select record. And we can do that by going, and first let me comment this, uh, so let, let's say grab record number, right? And then here we can go grab record values. And to do that, we can just call the item function on our tree. So let's go uh, values equal my underscore tree dot item. And inside of here, we need to pass two parameters. First, we need to pass the number of the record that we want to look up, right? So that's going to be selected. So we could put this in there. And then next, we want to say, what do we want to grab? We want to grab the text. We want to grab the values. Do we want to grab the IID? What do we want to grab? We want to grab the values, right? So that will do it. So let's go ahead and copy this and print this out to see what it returns. It's going to return all kinds of weird stuff. So let's see. So let's grab Aaron again, click select record. And here it says Aaron for and ham and Aaron for and ham. And you can't really tell here because it's just printed it onto the screen, but this is actually sort of returning a list. And we can see that by coming back to our code and let's just print out values and this will print it to the terminal. So let's run this again real quick. Let's grab Aaron, click the button prints it out here. Then when we close this, it prints out, you can see it's not a list, it's a tuple, right? So we can access a tuple by accessing the items of that tuple, just like the items of a list, right? So we can do that, head back over to our code, just by printing out the tuple item number. So right here, for instance, values. If we wanted the first thing, which is the name, that would be the zeroth item of that tuple. So if we save this and run it, we see, I'm back over to Aaron, we click this button, it should output Aaron, it does, right? So we know there's three things, so we can then access those three things by referencing the tuple number zero, one, and two, because tuples start at zero, just like lists start at zero. So Aaron is the zeroth item of the tuple, the ID is the, sec is the first item, and the topping is the second item, right? So now that we know those, we can kind of do whatever we want with them. So let's kind of, let's comment this out. We don't really need it. So what do we want to do? Well, we've got these things here. Let's put whatever is in our tuple into these things. So we can do that pretty simply by just output to entry boxes, right? Just by calling them. So name underscore box dot insert. And what do we want to insert? We want to insert into the zeroth position of our entry box. And what do we want to insert? Well, we want to insert values, but we want for this one, the name, we want the zeroth one. So I'm going to just copy this whole thing here. And let's paste it two more times. And this one will be ID box. And this one will be topping box. And for values, we want the oneth item and the twoth item. So now if we save this and run it, we see we can grab Aaron again, we click select record and boom, Aaron for and ham pop up in our entry boxes. So now we just need to save whatever's in here. And we sort of already know how to do that because we did it earlier when we were, uh, let's see, adding a record, right? We just do the same thing basically. And here we can change, you know, Aaron to right. Eight. And when we click this, it'll update here, but we haven't done this select record button yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. 
And this should be pretty easy. So let's head down to update record. And again, we need to find out what record we want to update. So that was selected. So let's, let's just copy this thing and paste it down here. So selected is going to be my tree dot focus. That's going to give us the number of the record three or four or whatever, whatever that number is. So just like up here, we can use this item to change a thing to set a thing equal to something. Right here, we're getting the values, we can also make it equal to the values. So to do that, let's just copy this whole thing here, come down here to our update record. And let's go save new data. So my tree dot item, which one do we want to save? Well, we want to save selected, which is whatever we're cl we've clicked on. And instead of just doing values like this, we want the text to equal nothing. And we want the values to equal and this is going to be a tuple. And inside of here, we just want each of these things. So we can go name underscore box dot get and that's a function because we're getting getting whatever's in the entry box. We also want ID under, underscore box dot get and that's a function. And finally, we want topping underscore box dot get and that's a function too. And that should do the trick. Now, after we save this, we want to delete whatever's in those boxes. So I'm just going to copy this stuff right here. Just in case we want to then do another one later, we want to make sure those boxes have been cleared. Let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, run this guy one more time. So let's click on Bob this time, select record Bob five and onion, and we want to change him to Bobby, for instance, now we can click save record. And boom, these boxes disappear. And up here, it says Bobby, Bobby five, Bobby likes onions, maybe we want to change it again, select the record, uh, we like Bob better, Bob doesn't like onion, he likes peppers. So now if we save this, boom, it changes back to Bob and peppers. And that's how you do it. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, not a whole lot to it. But uh, a couple of new different things, the dot item function, for instance, I don't think we've looked at that before. So that's kind of cool and a piece of cake. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So I pay just $49 to access all my courses. That's over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.